Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to continue on this week with non-English vocals. We're going to be looking at uh, an Icelandic band, I believe, and I am probably really going to mess up this name, but I'm going to try my best. I believe it's Hamfirth. The song is Vrain, I think. <laughs> um, and I forgot... <laughs> I knew I forgot to check one thing. Uh, the name of this cathedral says live in Torshva, Torshav, Torshavin Cathedral. Uh, that one's probably quite a bit worse off than the name of the band in the song. Because like I said, I forgot to look up one thing before we started this. Uh, so let's get into this. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Very sparse and atmospheric to start out with. So we have three bars of seven. I gotta figure out this fourth bar though. Yeah, so three bars of seven and a nine, which is interesting. Feeling longer than the seven. If they're still doing that. 
really hard to keep up with the time on this track. I like how he's mixed both of the vocal styles now. He has a distortion there, but he's actually hitting a pitch as well and creating this nice um, distorted clean. Yeah, the drummer is occasionally using the bell on one of the cymbals and it creates this pitch that just breaks through. No other instruments really in that area, and it just cuts right through the bands. but it's only in the band. So I wonder if those are triple and quarter notes just in the slow tempo. Those eighth note bass kicks are 
doing so much to drive the song home to get it over the finish line here. The bass is uh, doing it as well. Yeah, so that's pretty cool too. Uh, we saw a lot of chord progressions that didn't have very strong resolutions to them. Um, it's not like they were not resolving their progression at all. They just weren't exceptionally strong progressions. Um, and it was really nice to land on that final chord there and kind of have a bit more resolution than we had heard anywhere else in the song. It really made it feel... Uh, finite finale it, the finale the final part of the song uh, this epic this is oppressive heavy weight is finally passed it's finally over <clears throat> and I, I like how that's represented in the music as well now I don't know where to start with this I I have so many things I want to talk about, um, and I want to do them all first. <laughs> uh, first of all, let's just let's get to the energy of the song. It is heavy. It is weighty. It is uh, oppressive. It is depressive. It is just super weighted towards the lower end with just this sludge-like trek of a speed. It, the tempo is so low, the majority of the instruments are playing low, and it just has this dragging feel. There's barely anything that's really pushing the song forward or even just dragging it uh, along, anything to really get it over the finish line, to get it to the ending. The song does not want to finish. It just kind of wants to sit here and wallow in the despair, the weight of this atmosphere that they've created, and... Yeah, we've we've heard a few songs that do this. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much the whole doom metal genre as a whole. Um, but I I don't know if it was it being live um, or if it was something else. But uh, for whatever reason, this one kind of clicked with me um, with its weight. Um, I I'm. I'm not sure why this one did and uh, the others that we've checked out haven't, but there's something about this song where the weight isn't just palpable. The song makes you want to stay in it. Uh, usually when we check out music adjacent to this, as far as atmosphere or emotional feeling, um, I'm listening to it. I'm checking it out. I'm seeing what the song has to offer, but it's not something I'm enjoying being in. And maybe enjoying is the wrong word, but usually I'm waiting for those songs to finish. And part of that just might be the repetitive nature of them. I've mentioned before, I tend to enjoy uh, development in my song. Um, and I, I can usually stick around with a, a repetitive loop for a while, but we go with something extremely slow like this with these long uh, loops and then we have to loop those multiple times. Um, usually I, I'm starting to get a bit fatigued and wary of, uh, wary of what's going on. Weary, actually that's the word I want. But for whatever reason this song had my attention throughout. Um, something about it, like I said, just kind of clicked with me. It's not that I enjoyed the weight of it, I just wasn't waiting to get out of it, if that makes any sense. Um, so I really enjoy that about it. Um, I also really like their contrast, right? So the song is heavy, low, and dreary. That's the song. Uh, that's that's pretty much 90% of it. However, we get these little glimpses of otherness. We have those really beautiful, clean vocals 
and he eventually goes into, or he occasionally goes into some higher, uh, a higher range that is above what most of the rest of the band is playing. We also have uh, the drums, which occasionally, I mentioned when they bring in the bell part of the cymbal, it is this bright, high sound that cuts through everything else. There's not really anything that's playing in that range when the drummer use, utilizes those. Um, and the drummer also has some occasion, occasional drum fills and patterns that ramp up the tempo a little bit. It, in, it puts some drive into the song um, and really pushes it to go somewhere because the song <laughs> really just wants to sit where it is. Um, it's not lazy. It's more of, of like clinical depression where the song maybe understands it needs to finish eventually, but it just doesn't have the motivation to do that. The song really just wants to sit in this bubble, this feeling, this atmosphere. So the drummer occasionally provides some of that that boost of energy to okay, you know, let's let's get moving along. You know, let's uh let's let's kickstart this a little bit. Um, and I think it, it might be these small moments of contrast that uh, I enjoyed. I, I was always looking out for them, whether it was maybe a guitar lick that was uh, a little faster than the quarter notes that pretty much were utilized throughout. Um, like I said, something in the drums, maybe a rhythmic thing or a specific sound, the vocalist changing uh, the, the way that they sang. There's all these little moments that feel like the desire to push forward. And inevitably, they all get pulled back. Even there at the end, the drummer had that really nice uh, snare fill that went into the eighth note bass kicks. We stuck around with that for, uh, you know, a repetition, four bars maybe. And they were gone once again. Um, so no matter how much energy is devoted, there's always this drive, this, this rubber banding of the song to just rein it back in every time. Uh, so it's really cool to see that. I don't know if that has any sort of correlations with the lyrics. Uh, I, I've mentioned many times on this channel, lyrics are not really my forte, but 100% so when I can't understand them due to a language barrier. So yeah, I don't know if the song is about any of these themes of trying to push through and, and maybe finding motivation and then always getting pulled back to the the norm, the depressive norm or, or uh, the, the lacking energy. But I kind of feel a lot of that in the musical aspects. Um, something else I really liked was... Oh, blinked out on it. <laughs> uh, let's let's recoup my thoughts then. So we got the uh, the contrasting ideas. We got the vocal work. Um, yeah, dang. I've been told a couple of times I should use a whiteboard, and uh, I think this is a very key argument as to why I should be taking notes <laughs> during these videos. Uh, I've also been told before I should pause them, and that's just not going to happen. That's a conversation for another day. I'm not going to pause these videos, though. It's rude. Um, I don't know. There's also that really nice visual contrast. It doesn't really have much to do with the music, but I think it was interesting to see this heavy doom metal with these growling vocals um, and everybody just in these nice tuxedos. Uh, something comical about that to me. <laughs> uh, just a bit of a visual expectation subversion. Uh, you, you know, you really expect these guys in, you know, jeans and a t-shirt or done up in some sort of extravagant costume. But nope. They're just dressed up like they're performing opera. Um, speaking of opera, though, that dude, uh, the lead singer, I really really enjoy his cleans. I think it brings a really nice element to this style of music that we don't see too often. 
Um, I've mentioned before that growls aren't really my thing. And uh, I've had some uh, people kind of explain them to me, uh, you know, listen to them as part of the noise of the band, so to speak. Uh, usually they're mixed a little lower. They're more of a, a textural thing. There's lots of ways to view growls. Um, but they still don't really click for me too often. However, I really loved this because the harshness and feral aspects of those growls were contrasted extremely sharply with his beautiful vibrato. Um, and he actually had a really nice range on his clean vocals too. He went from something that felt very comfortable in the lower end that kind of fit in with the rest of the instruments and helped um, add to that lower end weightiness. But he also, uh, he had a range, uh, at least maybe an octave, somewhere around an octave, a little more, a little less um, above that that cut through and did the same thing that the bell hits on the cymbals do by providing this higher range aspect that can cut above the band and really occupy a space that is extremely lacking. So not only do we have the contrast of the lower versus the higher, but we have the contrasting overall throughout the entire song of this empty space that occasionally gets filled with sound and that causes those sections of the song to stand out against the rest just because they have a different feel and, and uh, atmosphere to them. So yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed this band. Um, doom and growling aren't necessarily some of my top genres that we've explored since starting the channel. Um, there have been moments where I've kind of gravitated to them a little bit. Uh, some bands have stuck with me and I've went and listened to them. But for the most part, the genre is not a staple in my casual listening and not necessarily and, and not a genre that I typically uh, really explore more of. But I am interested. I don't know if this is more of a one-off. Uh, maybe this would be like they're epic and usually they're just heavy and growling. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about, time signature. This is, yeah, this is a big one. Um, so, the majority of the song, I don't know if it was all of it, um, the, the low tempo, the slow tempo, really made it difficult for me to keep track of time feels, uh, pulses, because the song almost enters into a free time feel with, one, how odd the opening uh time signatures are but also just because it's you count so slowly the the amount of space between beats is so long that uh you know a bar is pretty lengthy and uh, it's really difficult for me to feel to re retain the feeling through the entire bar or through an entire four bar phrase uh when that four bar phrase is taking you know 20 30 seconds um, so I'm not getting a nice compressed version of it that I can quickly feel out, uh, you know, where the accented notes are and where hiccups might be. And that would indicate, uh, you know, a beat added or a beat removed and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's harder for me to feel time signatures in slower tempos like this. However, when we opened, I'm quite certain that we were doing three bars of seven and a bar of nine, which made that final bar drag on emphasizing this quality of the song of being heavy and wanting to stay in place we can't even get through a single repeating phrase without feeling like we're dragging our feet and that's aside from the, the slow tempo and the low notes that is literally a part of the song structure we have added two extra beats to the end of our phrasing um but it's really cool when we see what they do with that later on in the song and they put some quarter note triplets in there and it really you get you get the 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 lagging element <laughs> you get the lagging element of the uh, extra two beats and then you also get the lagging element of the triplet especially a triplet quarter i don't know what it is about a triplet quarter i'm sure uh somebody could break it down but the triplet quarter tends to have a sluggishness to it. And they put those two together. And to me, it feels like an exaggerated fermata. But 
Uh, I noticed that it really only appears in the band, and there was a couple of times where the vocalist sang over it and did not participate, so it is not a fermata. Fermata would be band-wide. Um, well, I suppose you could have instrument-specific fermatas, but that's going to be incredibly difficult to... No, you can't. Because that means part of the band ends up starting the next bar behind the other. Yeah, no. Fermata's a band wide. <laughs> um, so yeah, my next thought would be that we're slowing it down. Uh, and a the triplet quarter just happens to be what fit with what they were doing. So yeah, just finding really cool ways to emphasize some of the thematic elements in the music. Um by utilizing these different tools and even utilizing these tools in tandem to amplify their effects. Really great writing all around. Um, it's where you guys come in though, hit me up in the comments, let me know what you thought of this track, if you have any information into it. Like I said, the lyrics, even if I could understand most of it, I mean, growling, I've I've mentioned, I have problems understanding growling lyrics to begin with, but uh, it's not in a language I know. So there's just no chance I could have any sort of insight into, you know, even a snippet of the lyrics. So if you know what the song is about, lyrically, let me know. Because I'm really interested how the lyrics might line up with some of the thematic elements in the music I, uh, I came upon in this analysis. When you're done commenting, you can head up to the description box. There's a link in there for Linktree, which is just this super nifty little place that puts all of my links together in a single kind of pretty, prettier than a bunch of URLs slammed together in a description box, kind of pretty website. You want to check out um, the Discord community, you want to support the channel through Patreon, you want to check me out on Twitter, all those links are there. It's really cool. I also have my last FM up there. It's kind of a bit sparse, but it gets added to as I listen to music. You can see what I've been listening to. Um, yeah, all links are there though. Above that, like, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual with our penultimate episode of this week's theme of non-English vocals. I'm pretty excited to see what else we have in store for us. So until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.